Today in front of us, we have the Red Magic 7. Red Magic was one of the gaming phones that survived my durability test last year. There were a few gaming phones that didn't. And this year, I'm hoping this Red Magic 7 does survive. It has an internal RGB LED cooling fan. And I want to see how it handles today's sponsor, Mecarina. Mecarina is a free, tactical, team-based mobile game that allows you to build and fight customizable mechs with a ton of upgradable weapons. Mecarina also just launched a Pilots feature, which brings 12 new drivers into the game, adding a ton of new strategies and tactics to the playing field. It's totally free to play. There are last man standing rounds, capture the flag style rounds, and you can play by yourself or with friends. There are dozens of mechs and plenty of weapons to build up and collect. Plus, personally, I like that it's one of those games you can play for a few minutes or a few hours, depending on how much you want to upgrade your stuff. And, of course, it's free. Mecarina has overhauled a few maps and always have special events happening around holidays. If you use my personal link down in the description or scan this QR code, you get a free Steel Reaper skin, 500 A-coins, and 70,000 credits, which will really help kickstart your own game. My username in the game is Jerry Rig, so if you see me running around, play nice, and remember, it was me who got you all of that free coin. Now, it's time to see if this Red Magic 7 can survive my durability test. Let's hope it does better than the OnePlus 10. Let's get started. Personally, I'm a big fan of gaming phones. They are allowed to be a little more flashy and usually have more top-end specs than traditional non-gaming phones. And while they are designed for gamers and gaming, regular people can still appreciate all that extra power. And everyone will notice the RGBs. Inside the box we get the phone, flexible rubber case, and Nubia's 65 watt fast charger with a USB-C cable. We're off to a good start. I also gotta say that this phone looks pretty awesome on the back. Red Magic has incorporated a clear glass panel over the cooling fan so we can see it in action. Transparent tech is the best tech. The clear panel also allows Nubia to highlight the other specs of the phone, all written below the surface, giving it more of a three-dimensional vibe. I'm a fan of the fan. Red Magic has been doing the fan thing for a few years now, but this is the first time they've ever had dual intakes, which is a 35% increased airflow over the singular vent from last year. And of course, not only do we have a clear fan, but it's also backlit by RGB LEDs. The lights aren't super pronounced on my well-lit desktop, but they're definitely there. I kind of wish they would rotate with the fan as it turns, kind of like the fans on desktop gaming PCs, but maybe that's a feature they'll add next year. Applying the flexible case, I thought it was kind of dumb at first that the case blocked all intake and vents for the fan. But it turns out that the case is in fact not designed wrong. It just takes more than three brain cells to put it on correctly, with the right side up. And of course, the clear case does work with the fan just fine, not obstructing anything. You can see the RGB shining up through the fan vent. The phone does not have an official IP rating, for obvious reasons. But let's see how much of a breeze this little fan can generate. When maxed out, the thing spins at 20,000 rotations per minute, and while it's pretty quiet, you can still definitely hear that something's going on inside. It's strong enough to blow the little paper strips around on my desk, so it's definitely moving some major air over that processor, and it'll be interesting to see what that ductwork looks like from the inside during the teardown video. Or, you know, if the phone snaps in half during this video, whichever comes first. And lucky for the fan, it is unreachable with my tweezers from the side vent. Otherwise, we'd poke it. Now for the scratch test. We've been performing these same series of tests on every major phone that's come out for the past seven years. So we have a baseline for how durable a mobile device needs to be. It's nice of Red Magic to include a screen protector. We know that plastic scratches a level two or three, glass is a five or six, and sapphire is a level eight or nine. The centerline camera bump on the back does allow the phone to rock back and forth during this process, and we find that the Red Magic 7 starts scratching at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7. Pretty normal. 
The front 8 megapixel camera is tucked up into the top bezel, along with the super thin plastic earpiece. The earpiece is secure though and won't be falling off on its own. The sides of the phone are made from metal. The capacitive triggers on each edge are scratchable. Red Magic says these buttons are good for over 2 million touches and have an 8 millisecond response time, which is almost as fast as the display refreshes. So if your chicken dinner gets yeeted by a smurf, you can't go blaming the hardware. And your eyes also don't deceive you, there is indeed a headphone jack at the top. And over on the left side we have a dedicated gaming mode button, along with the fan intake and metal volume rocker. The bottom has our lower stereo speaker, 65 watt USB-C port, and our dual SIM card tray with a red rubber ring. There is some water resistance. The back of the phone, as we see, is covered with glass. The center strip has a metallic shine to it, and the rest of the glass slab is transparent, so we can see through onto the designs under the glass panel. The camera lenses are also covered by glass. The top is an 8 megapixel ultra wide. Then we have the 64 megapixel main sensor, and at the bottom we have a 2 megapixel macro camera, all above a triangular single color LED flash. The rear intake for the air duct is made from metal. I'm very curious to see how it all connects on the inside. But one interesting feature that I haven't seen before is that the Red Magic has their fingerprint scanner doing double duty as a heart rate monitor. Not too shabby. I wonder if other phones could implement this as well, with a software update, since it's a pretty cool feature. Coming back to the fans, it's easy to tell what direction the air is going because of the way the vent sucks the flame from my lighter inside the phone. Red Magic is saying that in addition to the fan, there are nine layers of heat dissipating material inside, which is once again all the more reason to take it apart. The screen is a 6.8 inch 1080p with a 165 hertz refresh rate and a 720 hertz touch sample rate, meaning the phone can sense your touch before you can even see it on the screen. It also has a 10 bit AMOLED with 1 billion colors and lasts for about 25 seconds under the heat from my lighter before the screen starts to burn white, and that mark does stay there permanently. We'll test the fingerprint scanner real quick before the bin test, adding some level 7 deeper grooves after my print has been set, and even with those extra abrasions on top, the optical reader is still surprisingly quick. Normally my fingers don't have good luck with fingerprint readers. And speaking of luck, for some reason, phones aren't having good luck with my bin test this year. So fingers crossed that the air channels inside of this Red Magic 7 don't make anything weaker inside. Bending from the back with the fan full blast, we do get a slight flex, but no cracking sounds or other indications of failure. And flipping it around to the front, again yields no structural damage. The Red Magic has made a solid, structural, and very interesting phone for 2022. It does survive my durability test, meaning we can move forward to taking it apart for the teardown. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss that video, and come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks dumb for watching, I'll see you around.